everyone, welcome back. Happy beginning of autumn. I uh, know I'm excited about it. I hope you are as well. I've been seeing a lot of tights content, which uh, is fun because I, less so now, but I used to very much be like a tights queen because fun fact, the lingerie store I worked for also was a tights store. In the same way that all of the bras we sold were really mid-market, all of the tights we sold were really mid-market too. So there's one brand that's really, if you're really into tights, you might know, which is called Wolford, which I will not be recommending today because I don't know it because it was definitely like a higher quality, higher price brand. But I wanted to go through and give some of the advice for tights that I feel like I was always giving to customers. This is gonna be like part buying guide, part just like stuff to look out for, terms to search and all of that. We're just gonna talk about some different kinds of tights, the things that I feel like a lot of people don't know that feel really confusing, <laughs> and um, I will recommend some pairs of tights as I go. This is not a comprehensive list at all of like tights that I recommend. Up front, I wanna give you a list of just some brands of tights that I really like to look out for. So Hue is like the really big one. You're gonna see them everywhere. You'll see them in Nordstrom, you'll see them, uh, I don't know, Macy's, kind of like anywhere that sells tights. They're generally a pretty good price point and they have everything from shears to opaque colorful tights to fishnet tights and sweater tights. And then we have Mimwa, which is a brand I as a really tall person love. Um, and then we have Biella, which is like my pride and joy and I think may have closed, but I found some of their stuff on like other retailers' websites in the past like year or so, so I feel like you know, maybe you can still find some of their stuff. If you find somewhere that sells Biela tights, please tell me in the comments because I am desperate. This is just one where that's kind of a wild card, but just like if you find it, they make really good stuff. Foot traffic, which is, I feel like quality wise, pretty similar to Hue, pretty similar in price point. I don't like them quite as much as Hue, but they're just about as good, so it kind of just comes down to what you want. And they have a combed cotton tight, so if you want cotton, uh, them and Mimoi and Biela are going to be your best bets. And then we have Commando, who is the highest price of the ones I'm going to talk to you about today, but also they're the ones that I go back to now. Um, again, as a tall person, they're really good. I don't think they have a great extended size range either. If you have recommendations for extended size, tights, please tell me. I would love to do a video on that specifically. Let's talk about tights. When you're shopping for tights, brand is actually not super important, which I say after having just told you all these brands that I like. In each brand, every style is going to be so different. So you can have one brand that has one style that you love that lasts you a long time, and then another style that falls apart the first time you wear them. A lot of it is gonna come down to trial and error and just paying attention when you buy tights to how long they last, what caused them to rip, and that is gonna be your best indicator of what works for you. Because even my favorite tights will get snags in them if I, you know, cross by a splinter or something. That is my first tip. You can find a lot of tights that will last you a long time kind of anywhere. You just have to try them and see what actually works for you. So the next two things are things that are kind of universal. It doesn't matter what you're looking for. These are just things that you should know going into it. So most tights are sized by height and by weight. And in general, those ranges are gonna be on the package in some various ways that can be more and less confusing. In general, I think if you're really tall and you're in between sizes, you wanna go with the larger size. The thing about sizing is it can feel really overwhelming, so you just wanna make sure you go in knowing either your height and your weight or knowing what size you wear in that brand already. That can be kind of triggering for some people, I definitely understand, but it's also just like, gonna mean you take home a lot fewer tights that don't fit you. The next thing is something that is kind of related to size because one of the main ways that people think the tights don't fit them is they put them on wrong. So it's very easy to pull on a pair of tights and be like, these are way too small, they're so hard to get up, they fall down all the time. Um, and that can be because of the size, but more often it is going to be because you put them on wrong. And I say this as someone who put them on wrong for a really long time and suffered from this. You can fix a lot of problems by putting them on carefully. So what you do is you roll the tights all the way up. So like you have all of them in your hand and you're gonna pull it onto each foot and then inch the tight little by little up each leg 
all the way up. And that helps with a lot of things. It helps make sure that they're even. So if you notice that sometimes they're really dark on the bottom of your leg and lighter on the top, this can help a lot with that. It helps when you're doing things with vertical stripes or with back seams, because it'll help keep that straight. And then the next part about this is when you pull them down at all to go to the bathroom or anything, you roll them all the way back down and then inch them up again. This is the biggest like quality of life tights tip that I can give you because if you don't do this, your tights are gonna be falling down all day and you're gonna come up with lots of reasons as to why you think your tights are always falling down. Most of the time, it's because of this. When it comes to caring for your tights, you want to take care of them kind of in the same way you take care of your nice underwear. I would usually just put them in a lingerie bag, run them through the washer, and then pull them out and hang dry them. When it comes to how often to wash them, if they're footed tights, you kind of want to wash them the same way you would wash socks, which means like basically every time. You can kind of get away with doing this less if you want to like layer socks under the tights. So like during the winter, I think that can be a good option. And you can get away with washing them a lot less if they're footless. So one hack I have for you is wearing footless tights and a pair of socks, and then you can wash the tights way less often than you have to wash the socks. The thing that I will warn you up front is that it doesn't matter how nice a pair of tights is, there are certain things that it will catch on and will rip them. So like I, uh, the store we worked at had a lot of vintage furniture and so there were a couple of like spots where just like the little head of a nail would be sticking out and it would catch on your tights and just like rip a hole in them. You can't stop that. Sometimes your tights are gonna get snags and the best advice I can give you is don't touch them. If you have a little snag in your tights, your tights are still wearable, no one's gonna notice. If you cut that snag off, you will have a giant hole in your tights because it will unravel everything around it. There are supposedly ways that you can use like clear nail polish or hairspray to stop them from snagging. I've never done any of these um, because texturally it sounds bad. I also don't think it would look great. And if they're really heavier, like cloth tights, then you can probably darn them the same way you would socks. So that is it as far as like care and keeping of tights. A lot of this will help with tights you already have, so you don't have to go out and buy new tights. It'll just make tights a little more comfortable as you move through your day. Now I wanna talk about some of the different kinds of tights for when you are shopping for tights. First, we're gonna go through just like tights, tights. We're gonna talk about the ones that go from your toe all the way up to your belly. And we're gonna break these down into three different categories. We're gonna have shears, opaques, and sweater tights. So starting off with shears. These are what people usually refer to as pantyhose. Shears are, in my opinion, the least comfortable and the least sturdy, but they look so good. Like a pair of black shears can really make a, an outfit look really great. And there are comfortable ones you can find, but these are also the ones that are gonna fall apart the most. So I would just be careful if you're trying to incorporate them into your everyday wardrobe. That said, there are some really strong ones. Weirdly, the strongest shears I've ever found were from Calcedonia, which was like a really cheap tights chain in Italy when I lived there. And I would still have them and wear them all the time, except they didn't go up to six feet, so they would often ride down. But uh, if you happen to find Calcedonia shears, dear God, mine lasted me forever, and I beat the shit out of them. Um, and that's kind of an example of what I mean by you can't necessarily tell how long tights are gonna last you based on the brand or the price point. So when it comes to trying to find shears for like a an event, um, I think you can find a lot of really great ones from like Berkshire and Hue and just a lot of these brands that have really basic run-of-the-mill sheer tights. Um, and especially if you're planning on wearing it for like one night, you don't really have to worry about it that much. If you're careful about putting them on, they should survive the night. But I do really like commandos. So commandos tights feel really, really good. Sometimes they can last a little bit longer than Kyo. Honestly, I don't pay for their sheer tights because I don't think they last long enough to warrant the price, even though the quality definitely does warrant the price. I usually stick to their opaque tights because they last longer. What I would recommend and what me and all of my friends who worked at that store did was if we wanted to have sheer tights to wear in our everyday outfits, we would get the Hue Super Softs, which are a semi-sheer tight. 
This is just like slightly thicker, so you're not gonna get quite that like super sheer look, but you do get a sheer black tight. It's gonna last you a little bit longer um, than a regular sheer is going to. Uh, and they're very affordable and easy to come by. So I think that's kind of my recommendation if you want one for every day and you're not like a lawyer or someone who needs like really professional looking shears. So some shears have patterns on them. Hue has a lot of shears that are gonna have little like polka dots on them or flowers or anything. Uh, and then you'll have brands like Pretty Polly, which specialize in these fashion tights. And a lot of them are shears with patterns on them. Usually though, you're gonna be looking at a range of nudes and then black for these tights. There are white ones, I'm sure there are colorful ones, but generally you're looking at nudes and black. Next we have opaque tights, and this is generally what you're gonna be looking at when you look at just really bright, colorful tights. So opaque just means that they're not sheer. So I didn't really go through denier because it's not that important, but a lot of tights you look at are gonna have a denier on them, which is just like, gonna be how sheer they are. Lower denier, sheer, higher denier, less sheer. My favorite opaque tights tend to be in like the 30 to 50 denier range. I really love the Hue opaque tights. They're really colorful, they have great colors, they have a really good size range, um, and they're affordable and they're really comfortable. They're super soft and they don't have a control top and they stay up all day as long as you put them on properly and they last a pretty long time. So those are definitely my go-to when it comes to like just colorful everyday fashion tights. Um, there are some other good ones in natural fibers from Foot Traffic. They have their combed cotton ones and then Biella has like the best cotton tights and again I am heartbroken I can't find them anywhere. Heads up for them they do run a little shorter so like I wear their footless ones and those work for me but they also don't have a great size range. And that's kind of it as far as like fun, colorful, opaque tights that I really like. But you can find these a lot of places as well. I would just keep an eye out for ones that are, that feel a little sturdier and that are comfortable to you. Um, and that's pretty much going to tell you whether or not they do what they need to do. Um, when it comes to neutrals for plain black, any of those ones I just mentioned will have it, but also the Commando Ultimate Opaque Tights. These are the most expensive tights that I buy. I would probably buy some bougier tights if I was wearing tights every day, but I just don't. So the Commando Ultimate Opaque Tights are like the only <laughs> plain black tights I wear now. Um, I love them. I've actually only ever bought one pair and they've lasted me a long time. They have a couple small runs, but they're not really noticeable um, and they're great. And then Mima also has a lot of really good neutrals in their bamboo range. So again, if you're looking for a more natural fiber, something a little softer, that's a really good way to go. And the Mima bamboo range, I have had some that have lasted years. So that's a pretty good option there as well. Now we are going to move on to sweater tights. If I can impart one thing to you about sweater tights is that thicker does not mean warmer. So a lot of the time tights are kind of one of the things where I will just wear not natural fibers and it won't really bother me, but sweater tights kind of are the exception. When it comes to sweater tights, you're kind of looking in three basic camps. You have one that's just polyester uh, and those are not warm and I also think that they feel bad but that's just my opinion but they're definitely not going to keep you warm if you just want something to look cute with your outfit those can be a fine way to go they're really easy to find um, and they're generally very affordable and then we have cotton sweater tights which tend to just be like a little plush version of like an opaque tight so they're not there to keep you super warm but they'll protect you from like a wind chill and I think that they're a good option if it's just like a little chilly, you want something a little plusher, and maybe something that feels a little more fall. If you want warmth out of your tights, you want to get wool tights. Um, silk can also be an option, I just don't have any recommendations for silk tights, unfortunately. When you are looking at sweater tights, if you're like, I want something warm, do not be fooled by the chunky knit uh, polyester sweater tights, you really want to look for something with wool in it. My favorite one, my favorite brand that does this is Smartwool. <laughs> they don't make any tights I can wear, which is just like, oh my God, wait, I think Smartwool stopped making tights. Damn, that sucks. 
when I was writing this video, I forgot that I had been looking for Smartwool tights last year and they don't make them anymore. But if you need socks or leggings, Smartwool is a good way to go and it will achieve kind of a similar thing. Uh, okay, then for wool tights, Wolford also has some wool tights. A lot of the time you can just look up wool tights and you'll be able to find different options for this. If you really need warmth, you're probably looking for like a thermal underlayer anyways, in which case smart wool is a great way to go. Um, if you can spare the money because they're kind of pricey. You can also, if you want to, wear a pair of thermals underneath a pair of like pretty sweater tights. And that would probably also get the job done. Life hack. But like I mentioned earlier, footless tights are really good if you don't, if you're wearing them in the winter and you don't want to be washing them all the time. When you're wearing sweater tights, you tend to sweat more, I would say. Um, and this is kind of true all of the time, but I think it's really easy in the winter to wear footless tights and socks because you're often wearing boots anyways, or shoes where you can't see your whole foot. Um, but if you're someone who wears like high top shoes all the time, you can kind of do this whenever. Then we're gonna talk about stockings and thigh highs. Uh, I love stockings and I'm not that into thigh highs, um, which I know is kind of an opposite opinion of a lot of people. So thigh highs almost always have like a thick elastic band or like a rubber band around the top to stop them from falling down. Stockings don't have this and they intend to rely on the garter belt. I have not found a lot of thigh highs that fit me, again, because I'm tall, and don't roll down um, or don't cut in. I personally am a big fan of stockings and garter belts. I think it's so sad that garter belts have like completely fallen out as like a functional piece of clothing. For me, I find it much more comfortable to work all day, to spend a whole day, in a pair of stockings and a garter belt, partly because I don't have to pull them down to go to the bathroom. Uh, they don't give me swamp ass as bad as a lot of pantyhose can, and they don't fall down nearly as much because I have something really secure at the top holding them up. If this is something that you want to get into, I especially recommend it if you like to wear long skirts or if you just have problems with like yeast infections or discomfort around tights in general, uh, this can be a really good option. Dita Von Tees makes garter belts specifically that are really, really functional and not just cute. Um, so that's a great place to look. In general, you just want something sturdy and a little bit thicker. You don't want like a really, thin, super stretchy garter belt, because then it's just gonna fall down with your tights. Um, I have a pair of opaque ones from Sock Dreams, I think, that I really like and have lasted me a long time. Um, and I wish I could find more things like it, because I love stockings, I think they're super practical, um, and they're just more comfortable than regular tights. And then we have fishnets. Um, this is the last one and I almost didn't include it because I feel like people kind of understand fishnets. Breathe really well because they have a lot of holes in them. They can be just like really cute kind of statement pieces. You can layer them under things. One thing that I think not a lot of people know is that a good micro fishnet can replace pantyhose in a lot of situations. This is not necessarily true if you are someone who, again, is in like a really strict conservative environment because people have like weird associations with fishnets, but a micro nude fishnet will often give you the same exact look as a pair of sheer nude pantyhose, but again, they breathe better. Um, I think they're more comfortable in general. <laughs> and I just like them a little better for that option. With fishnets, things to look out for, I don't know, I would really just like pay attention to if they rip the first time you put them on. Hugh has some micro fishnets that are like, <laughs> that just like they've ripped what I've gotten out of the car, they've ripped just cause I'm, I like turn around. It's just like a bummer. But if you're kind of keeping an eye out for that and you're just paying attention to how long your fishnets are lasting, you should be able to find some that work. Tights are just one of those things where they get kind of like relegated off because we don't wear them that much. And so a lot of the time, the only place we can find them is like Urban Outfitters or Target, which is fine. Like, listen, buy your tights wherever. Uh, but it can be hard to figure out like the nuances of how you're supposed to wear them and um, how to take care of them and all of that. So I hope this is helpful. If you have any favorite tights brands you think I should check out, let me know because I 
do need to go tight shopping and a lot of my favorite brands have closed. It was very sad. But yeah, that's all I have for you this week. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you have a great rest of your week. I'll talk to you next time. Bye.